one of the questions some of you have had through the journey here on your prophetic journey was how does the prophetic play into politics? And uh, whether you're from America or South Africa or Australia, Europe, wherever you're from, Africa, we have so many viewers from all over the world. Thank you so much for viewing. And each one of us comes from a very different background. So we have our own biases for what we think needs to happen in politics. Now, America itself, we so many times want our American uh, president, because so many of them have ascribed to faith, we want a Christian, and we want a Christian that shares Christian values. And that's not wrong to want at all. I mean, how amazing is it that we've had so many Christians in office at different times, and that there's been an appeal of faith towards some of the political issues so many times over the, you know, the last couple hundred years. But at the same time, we've also seen some deep corruption from people who are lukewarm Christians or weren't really Christians, but use that as part of their office. And so there's kind of a jadedness when it comes to politics because there was a separation of church and state that was actually supposed to protect the church, not protect the government from the church in America's history. And because of that, we've set so much of a separation that we don't have very many ministry people or Christians who will run for office. We don't have many people who will engage politics or causes uh, in a political way. They do it more through humanitarian or um, relief or these kinds of things. And God's changing that. We're seeing a huge change where God's commissioning people all over the earth to go into politics, to become politicians. That would personally be one of my hardest things I would ever do is to become a politician. But I have friends who are politicians and they're killing it. They're doing such a good job walking the fine line because whether you're in one party or the other uh, and you have your main party empowered or somebody else is empowered depending on what country you come from, it's always a hard route and a hard walk because there's always multiple parties in politics and no matter what nation you're from and you have to deal with that. Now, the first thing that I love that happened when Trump got elected uh, was that our pastor, we come from a church here in LA that uh, I helped plant and the church is very diverse. So we have people from all kinds of communities involved. So we have a lot of liberals, we have a lot of conservatives and we coexist very well. We, you know, we coexist in our love and we have a real community. But the pastor of that church, her and her husband, Hona and Jennifer Toledo are the pastors now. And Jennifer stood up right after Trump was elected and to addressed our congregation and said, for those of you who love that Trump got elected, congratulations. For those of you who don't like that Trump got elected, you are now his intercessor. This is part of what you're called to do is to pray for whoever God puts in office or for whoever man elects in office that God can use them. I just want to read the scripture, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings who are already in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful, quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved, to come to the knowledge of the truth. And then one more scripture real fast. Stay with me. Romans 13, 1, let every person be subject to governing authorities, for there's no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. And you see this kind of weird theme in the scripture that God's saying, I can use whatever government to serve my purpose, even if it's evil. And we see that with, you know, the Israelites are going to Babylon, they're exiled there, and God says, pray for Babylon to prosper, because then you'll prosper. Pray for the places, the cities you're exiled to that my will would be done there too. So there's this, this calling of intercession to stand in the gap between what God wants to do and where man has failed and say, God, let your plan rule your, your, your areas of what you want success and succeed. And we see that you know this whole earth has been misaligned, so to speak, since the fall of man. But Jesus died to restore all things. So as a Christian, when we look at politics, we get to dream with God over his original intention of our, our city, our region, our country. If you're in America, it's maybe a state. You get to look at the whole nation, the nations, and you get to dream with God and say, God, what did you want to do over this nation? And we get to hear God about things that you know, no one's looking at. It's not even an option on the table right now in politics, but because God speaks to his people, he brings things onto the grace of the table of politics that are so brilliant and so full of wisdom. We see that through Solomon's example, who is a political ruler, a king, as well as a spiritual ruler. And he had this amazing connection to God where he had the wisdom of God's mind he processed with all the time. And political leaders came from all kinds of other nations to see what Solomon would say because it was so fascinating. They watched him like we watch reality television. And they wanted to see his perspective and how it could play out. As a matter of fact, they would come into his courts and watch him deliberate justice in his courts because it spoke so much to 
options that they didn't know how to play out in their nations or with their biases or religious backgrounds or political backgrounds that they learned so much that it reframed the way that they did life to the point that even the Queen of Sheba was saved by watching Solomon and that God loved his people so much that he raised up someone like Solomon. And so she said, I worship your God because of this. So she gets saved watching Solomon as an example. And I just believe that when we exercise our faith and we start to believe that God wants to do something profound in our city or our state or our region, our government, that he wants to do something. We won't care, well, we'll always care, but we won't care as much for the policies and, and all the things that can happen that are evil. You know, we've seen incredible evils enter into our political scenario here in America. And it's been hard, it's been hard to watch. And then we see there's all kinds of God wins too. It's almost like a chessboard that God God plays the hand, the enemy tries to counteract by playing a hand and God plays his hand and the enemy, you know, and we just see these moving pieces. But the difference is as a Christian, you have to realize that God always has the enemy in check. So even if it doesn't look like it in the natural, at the end of the age, we're gonna look back at the brilliance of God over nations and say, you were so beautiful, even in this, that we couldn't understand until it all unfolded. Wow, we, you're so beautiful. We need to trust him that way now. And prophetically, you're going to hear things for leaders. You're going to hear things for politics. You're going to hear things for governments. And if you have a lot of biases or conspiracy or anger or frustration with what's not happening, you'll have a hard time focusing on what God is doing because you'll be so consumed with the pain that you're experiencing or that others are experiencing. Like I know many people because of uh, the hot topics in America are abortion, sexuality, these kinds of things and gun control, these kinds of, you know, whatever it is. And these things are such hot topics to evangelicals that a lot of times we can't see what God's doing through a politician because they prescribe to something against the, the normal bias we have. And so we immediately villainize them that they're an evil person with terrible political agenda when they could be doing something over the poor or in finances or in education that we don't even look at or partner our faith to because we hate them for being a pro-abortion person or whatever. And we have to change the way we operate and not expect the world to be saved and not expect everyone to have the same belief system as us. And if the kingdom of God was birthed in Jesus's time through a bunch of people that were basically glorified exiled Jews, I mean, Israel was being like bombarded by Roman agenda. You have Rome taking over and obliterating whole nations and either emerging and assimilating or obliterating them, stripping them of culture. And then you have Israel in the midst of it that was only being kept alive possibly because of the financial ramifications, because there was so much wisdom in creating wealth and also power. So you have, and it was also a sympathetic project of some of the Roman leaders to keep it alive. So you have one of the most politically volatile seasons. And even Paul, through example, over and over in the book of Acts, we see him appeal to political leaders and see great impact in the world around him even through politics of being a Roman citizen. He never gave up his Roman citizenship, but used it when it was time for the kingdom. And I think we have to be the same way. So do we hate evil? Yes. Do we hate people? No. Do we believe that even if someone has an evil agenda that God could use the good that's in their heart too? We have to start to believe that. So I want to encourage you as it's coming up for some of the nations is time for voting. I want to encourage you to pray. Every time you get frustrated and angry, turn it to prayer and say, God, what is the good you're doing? in this person through their lives? What's the good you're doing in this genre, in this city, in this nation? Maybe it's not through the politician. Maybe you can't bring your heart into agreement for that. Maybe there's too much hurt. Maybe there's too much pain in what they represent. Well, look at what God's doing in the big picture. That's not limited to that person. And so look at what God's doing in the big picture and thank him. And for those of you who've never traveled outside and seen a developing nation, some of you are from developing nations or seeing a third world country, go to one as soon as you know you can go to one over the next couple of years, go to one and visit for a few weeks and really see what a nation that doesn't have a formation of godly government looks like. See what a nation that doesn't have development looks like. So you can get empathy and compassion for the leaders who are leading your nation and understand that you actually live in a good place, potentially. You can start to see what God's doing just by the contrast of how a developing nation is so underdeveloped and so hurting and there's so much corruption. And we have sophisticated corruption in America, but it, I mean, it pales in comparison to some of the communist nations that are out there that have constant corruption to the point to where they're appealing to other nations just for a moral standard. I mean, we 
are blessed. And if you live in a developing nation, we're praying for you. We're believing for you. We're believing that God has a developed picture in his hand, like a Polaroid over your nation of his desire. And I know that he wants to do it. And he wants to use you through your prayer life and possibly even through your voting and government. And don't ever take voting as just something you do as a citizen. Do it as an act of intercession. Vote in intercession. If you don't know who to vote for, vote with your conscience. Vote with the issues. Look through the issues and look at the person who you feel would serve God's original intention over your country. God has a best case scenario of what he can do through somebody, even if their agenda looks like it's opposing yours. Ask God what he wants to do and ask him to use that person. Then when you vote, do it as an act of intercession and warfare in the spirit that God's kingdom would win because he already has. So I want to encourage you to be a part of this, to be a part of politics. Don't not vote because you don't know what to do or you don't know who to vote for. You don't have a spiritual perspective on it. There's always a spiritual perspective when it comes to politics. All you have to do is engage his heart and you're going to hear him, feel him or know in your gut or instinct what to do.